Harriet Troscott and I work as communications officer for a project called Science and Plants for Schools. Uh, I'm Sam Brett, I'm a uh, special needs teaching assistant at Granter School Linton. <coughs> um, when did you start playing gamelan? I think I started about uh, eight or nine years ago now, which is when, when I first um, came back to working at the university. Um, I took a job back at the university about, oh yes, eight or nine years ago, and um, I've been playing gamelan here at Cambridge University ever since. What, what made you interested uh, playing gamelan? Well, I wasn't really interested in playing gamelan, to be honest. I was just looking for something to do in the evenings. And um, I opened up the free student newspaper and um, there was a, um, an advert saying that um, there were free gamelan workshops starting in 10 minutes time, 10 minutes away from where I was at that moment. And I thought, it's a sign. And I walked down the road and joined in my first gamelan lesson and I've been playing ever since. And how about you, Sam? Uh, well, I've been playing for about six years now. Um, I started officially um, at my university where I studied music, uh, which is Bath Spa University. It's got a lovely gamelan there. Um, and uh, I really got hooked in the first year. It was kind of one of the ensembles at the bottom of the list, and it didn't say anything about it. And I, just, I was a bit curious, really. <clears throat> and I really got into it, and by the third year, I really did enjoy it. And, um, but it got to the stage where when all the first years came in and we were just doing the same pieces every year over and over again so it was just willaging and strip again and that's, that's what it was we were at IU and then it kind of got to the end of the year and I had to decide whether to stick with my western instruments or not and I officially decided to stick with clarinet and I didn't play gamelan for a year after I came back here and then I discovered about this gamelan and joined up so that was three years ago now, I think. Mm. It's been three years since I've joined this gamelan. And uh, now I'm more hooked than ever, and I hardly ever play the clarinet. So <laughs> <laughs> which is really weird. But um, You played no. the clarinet in the I gamelan. I played the clarinet in the gamelan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was fun. I should do that again. <laughs> but no, so now I'm good. more hooked than ever. You should uh, compose the clarinet and the gamelan and perform. I have I have been tempted actually, but all I can think of is like Lou Harrison, and I, oh, I'll, I'll probably end up being <laughs> a Lou Harrison copy or something. <laughs> but how, how is it different playing clarinet and gamelan? Um, I don't know. Because I, I, I I still pass I I put them down as as two very separate instruments, and when I play the clarinet, I'm playing the clarinet, and I think it doesn't really matter where I play the clarinet it's always going to be the same there. Although, I mean, I always found it quite strange that the piece I was playing was initially for saxophone. So I did try to bring the saxophone in and it didn't really work out, partly because mine was broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But um, I suppose I'm yeah, it's trying, to, trying to make it fit with um, the gamelan itself was a bit of an interesting one. And being able to mess around with my tones and I could sort of glissando this place and really turn and tweak the piece, which was quite fun because normally I was a very strict Western player. It was all very classical, um, and I didn't do any form of improvisation or you know, messing around with the instruments. So it was quite nice to have that freedom. Yeah. But clarinet uh, fit? It did, actually, it did. Um, better than the saxophone, which it originally was for. But um, I found the clarinet was a bit of a softer instrument. Mm -hmm. Whereas the saxophone's quite harsh. I can't remember, was that Bubara and Robert or the Cornish Lantern? Um, I think we initially did it for the Cornish Lantern, didn't we? Cause I think we did, but we did because we did Bubara and Robert once with trumpet. Yeah, and and I, tried it, I tried it with the clarinet, didn't I? Mm, mm. Um, I can't remember, if it did, did it not work with the, with the clarinet? I think with the clarinet it was really fun because I could probably fanfare it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember it being fun, but... Yeah, um, I, don't, I can't remember if that worked because we only did it once or twice. Mm, we we mm. got straight on the Cornish Lantern. Um, and I mean, I, I played Bavar and Roberts with a trumpet at Bath Spa, and I played uh, it here, uh, so I don't uh, know when you guys did it. We well, see, we, we did it before you started. We had a guy before. that uh, was a um, music tutor over at Anglia Ruskin, and oh, he nice. 
played. He was comp- teacher of composition and he also played a trumpet. I don't know which one he is. Oh, I can't remember. So I'm at Anglia Ruskin as well, and I play mm. Anklum on Mondays as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, with Helen. Um, although I missed this week. She just walked past me earlier, she just gave me a look. <laughs> <laughs> I never miss a Kermelan, so it's weird that oh, I missed it yesterday. Playing Japanese in the Anklum. It's, it's, so, it's so different. Um, partly because the people... <laughs> Patty knows it. I've, I've come in on Tuesdays and I rant. <laughs> um, well, with Balinese, it's a university group and they're all first years and they're not very serious about what they do quite yet. And um, it's one of those things they kind of have to choose either Anklo or something else. So, mm. not many people go in there with, like, right, I'm going to learn Gamelan. Mm. So it can be a little bit frustrating sometimes, and especially with them all starting going back to the beginning every yeah, year. Yeah, although this year we've got we've come on length to sort of strengthen. It's been great. Um, whereas here we all come on at seven thirty and we we knuckle it down for two hours mm. and we all really want to learn stuff. Like every week someone learns something new, which is great. Whereas it, with Balinese, the group that we're with, we do the same thing every week and we don't seem to get very far. Um, but the actual play itself is it is very different. Like, I mean, obviously the mm. tuning system's slightly different, and it's very different sound. I mean, I love the sound, but I'd rather listen to it on CD where people can play it properly. <laughs> 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 I mean, um, I saw um, a video of some proper, really professional players uh, playing the rayon, and blew me away <laughs> comparing to me playing my two tiny, <laughs> two, two tiny um, rayon. And these guys were just flying around and they were all together and they didn't even look at each other. It was brilliant. Whereas we, it just takes people a long time to get their rhythm right. Mm. You should come to London and play with us in London. Yeah, Helen's mm. told me this so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I, I'm, I'm tempted again. Mm. <laughs> um, but see, so yeah, it's London. <laughs> mm. And how about you, Helen? Uh, how do you feel playing uh, with the group? Oh, that's a really hard question. Um, well, um, it depends on, as always, it depends on how well the, how well we know the piece, how well it's going. Um, it can, it can be absolutely brilliant. There are, there are times when I just look around and I think I can't believe that the people that are playing around me, that this, that this incredibly mechanical-looking set of, of um, bits of metal suspended on bits of wood, that the people just hitting these that it all comes together and makes this incredibly complex interlocking sound. It just mm. sounds, it sounds like one instrument. Yeah. Um, and especially, especially when, when suddenly, when suddenly there's some kind of moment of transition and you've gone from something very simple to suddenly maybe the bonangs are starting to play an interlocking pattern and it just suddenly everything just um, unfolds and you you've gone from something very simple to something incredibly complex and it's a it's a it sounds absolutely wonderful. But at the same time, I always remember my first big concert, where um, which I descri- I was on the gongs, and I described it to someone as being simultaneously boring and incredibly stressful because I just sat there for what felt like hours waiting, and you had to get the gongs in exactly the right place. Yeah. But most of the time, you just sit there waiting, so you're there desperately counting and. Um, uh, hoping you're going to hit them in the right places. I was yeah. nervous when I go in the gong, actually. I love the gongs, but I do find myself thinking, well, what if I get it wrong? Yeah, no, I love them. I love them now. <laughs> One of the things I really enjoy is I play the gongs mm. a lot now. Yeah, you and, do choose um, it a lot, I do. Well, what I really like is I love that feeling that everything's interlocking and it's getting more and more and more complex and you've got all these um, coalescing lines and then suddenly the gong plays and it's the reverberations, they just fill out, they fill out the harmonies and it suddenly puts a whole new whole new colour onto the onto the music as it's been already and it's just wonderful that that suddenly swells up and then it dies away and and then you, there's this pause and then again you get a new note and it's just I, mm. I really love that that feeling and I just now I'm, I'm anticipating think oh I'm going to play this note and it's going to be this this this, this feeling is going to come out of it and it's it's great. Mm. And Sam, could you tell us your experience performing with the Japanese camera? I think my favourite by far was when we officially started the concert for the Wyang um, last year. Was it last year? It was last year. Uh, I, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it must have been last year's one. And 
we oh. obviously we've been rehearsing for weekends and weekends. Mm. It was like mm. full day rehearsals, mm. Saturday, Sunday, and evening rehearsals on Thursdays as well as Tuesday. It was so hectic. Mm. And then on the day, um, we had quite a few people come from South Bank to um, help play as well, just to fill in all the missing gaps. And it was our first. It was our opening piece. I can't remember the piece actually. Can't remember it at all which one it was. But um, obviously there was, there was, we had the cello pong playing and um, we had, um, Sophie was on the rebab and we had everyone clapping and mm. singing. And there was one, I was playing Vonang and I had to, I had to get into my inbound and Sakara mm. and, and things like that. And I found myself probably getting the goosebumps when um, the vocalists really came oh, out. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, oh, <laughs> I had to keep myself contained because there was obviously there was Matthew at the front with all the puppets mm. and things and all the lighting was down. There was children sitting all around us on cushions mm. and things. Mm. And it was just the best atmosphere I've ever had with Gamelan. And it, obviously that took me four years of playing Gamelan <laughs> to get to that point where I suddenly thought, wow, I love what I'm doing right now. Because mm. I did really, I, I properly flared up and I was like, this is amazing. Um, and yeah, that's that's probably my ultimate at the moment. It's like mm-hmm. the opening piece of the wire. Well, you know what? The, wonderful. The, the concert we just did actually, um, the one we just did at King's College Chapel when mm. we um, when we when we started playing rock, which was a, the new composition by Neil Sorrell, that was just pretty. Because there was this moment which um, we were feeling really nervous about it in advance because we were playing in King's College Chapel. We were playing. There were two gamelans. We were at different ends of the nave. It was all. It we were was slightly out of tune from each other. Oh, it was. Every, every, <laughs> it was just set up. You, you just felt it's all going to go horribly wrong. And it, and it began. And I suddenly thought, we really, really, did work, really know it? this. Yeah. And it, we had been again. We've been rehearsing. For, we've been just rehearsing so intensively. We've been doing um, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, back again. Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, Tuesday. And it all paid off because it really did. It was just that feeling. It went so we, well. We, we, we were on top of the music. We were just, we knew it. It was great. It was that. Like, it was the last gong where obviously both gongs from opposite ends of the chapel oh, had been yeah, played at the same yeah. time, and you could sort of, you could hear where the, the line where they obviously hit, and sort of suddenly, the two sounds came mm. together. And it, I don't know how long that note lasted. It was, it was amazing. Just that one last gong, it was brilliant. Mm. Um, it was good fun in the end because yeah, that was. It was quite a nerve-wracking moment whether we, we could be together or not because yeah, yeah. rehearsals were a bit edgy. <laughs> oh, they were. They were <laughs> we never yeah. even got to talk to the Orc Gamelan people properly either, so <laughs> the only communication we ever did was, was <laughs> shouting at each other during the piece, which was, which was fun. I was communicating with my opposite we number on the knobs. We were, really, you know, we were just looking at each other right the way across the, the, the length of the chapel going... Oh yeah, you're the canon player. I remember seeing you two watch each other. Oh yeah, we were watching each other like hawks throughout to make sure we synchronised. It was proper watching because you you couldn't trust your ears at that point. Because of the sound delay on it, because we were so far away in the reverberation. So Mm. in order to make sure we really were playing at the same time. It's by sight only. Mm. Ignore what you can hear kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) It was, yeah.